<laughs> Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another repair video. And as you can see, my Subaru has its front wheels off the ground and the axles removed. And the reason for that is because in the last video where I replaced the axles on this car, I found out that there was a lot of play in the front differential. And I thought I might, uh, since I mentioned in the last video that I would make a video about dealing with that issue, well, here we are. As I've stated, what I've done is I've removed the front axles already. If you want to see how that's done, watch the other video. Uh, but this video is primarily going to pertain to this, uh, I don't necessarily want to call it setting backlash, but I guess, I guess you, you kind of could. Now, I've checked the service procedure in the service manual, and it's kind of unclear. And in fact, the only time that you reset this or you set this up initially is during the process of, say, a transmission rebuild. So in other words, the differential has to be out of the vehicle. So in other words, what I'm about to do is a bit unorthodox. And to be perfectly honest, since I haven't performed this procedure before and don't know if it's going to be successful, I also have to admit that uh, we may get some mixed results out of this. So. If you find that you have a similar problem to what I have here and you want to address it on your Subaru, I would strongly urge you to proceed with caution uh, for several reasons. Uh, mainly because the procedure I'm about to go through here is more of my takeaway from the service manual. So I'm going to try to use the information in the service manual and sort of apply it to what I have here in the vehicle so that I don't have to rip out this entire transmission differential assembly and try to do something with that. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Not saying that this will work. It might work, but I think it would be fun to try. And the reason why I am doing this is because I believe, well, I, I know for a fact now that, that you can adjust the preload on the carrier bearings, uh, which hold the differential together. Hang on one second. This is a differential, or some people might refer to it as a final drive assembly. This is not for a Subaru. It's actually out of an Acura. And this one is completely and totally trashed due to lack of lubrication. That being said, it has these bearings on the end. Well, I might as well pull this out and give you a better look at what a differential is. A differential is basically made up of two gears. This gear down in here is referred to as the pinion gear. And it is the thing that uh, is driven by the transmission. So power from the transmission comes out through here into this gear and this gear spins. This gear comes in contact with the ring gear, which is, which is what I have here. So the ring gear is driven by the pinion gear. And what happens is, as your axles are splined into this area here. This is the differential part of it, and we can cover that in another video, but for now, our purposes are basically to talk about this area here. Now, what I believe is happening inside our Subaru is these bearings, this bearing is completely gone, by the way. In fact, here's its old race. And, and that's basically what supports this whole assembly. So this thing is sitting inside the differential housing and what I'm seeing happening with those shafts that are coming out of the uh, differential on the Subaru is that there's a lot of play back and forth here, which means there's quite a bit of slop where these bearings are. Um, if you're wondering what this is, this drives the speedometer gear. This being the final drive assembly is normally where you take your speed signal from, for lack of a better word, and they use this gear around the outside of this differential assembly to do that. Uh, getting back to my point is that these bearings on either side here tend to, uh, well, they need a certain amount of tension on them. If they don't have a, enough tension on them, what happens is, is the tooth contact pattern between the pinion and the ring gear is not correct. So it might sit a little too far down in, or in the case of the Subaru, it's sitting too high. So it's not able to fully grab. You really want that pinion to seat down in, like perfectly in the center of these gears. In fact, many times when you're setting up a differential, in fact, any differential I can think of that, that you would set up, you would actually put paint on these gears, spin the whole assembly, and see where the pinion is making contact with the ring gear. Super important for setting this up because you want that contact pattern to be right dead on. There's a lot of torque that happens here between these teeth. And if it's not right, you can shear one of these teeth off and bad things can happen. What happened to this one, once again, was a lack of lubrication. Uh, it was pretty much dry and eventually just burned up. So what I'm trying to do is those nuts on the outside that we're gonna tighten on the Subaru are basically gonna set this ring gear into position against this pinion. And this is why it's critically important because as I said, if you don't have the correct tooth contact pattern, you could break one of these teeth off or worse, uh, 
Well, pretty much that is the worst thing. I mean, you break one of these teeth off. Let's get up underneath the vehicle and get a look at what I'm about to do. Well, before I jump under the car, I'm just gonna go over this procedure real quick, which is in the uh, PDF service manual that I got for this vehicle. Uh, and basically it states that you wanna tighten the left-hand retainer. This is where we're going here. You wanna tighten it basically until it bottoms out at zero lash. So in other words, that ring gear and that pinion gear are gonna make contact and be solid, and there's gonna be no movement between them. Then it looks like we need to back that off, I believe three notches, and secure the lock plate, which is this little guy right here. Um, and then we need to go over to the right side and tighten that down a few times and I guess spin it around uh, until that bottoms out. And then it looks like we need to tighten it one and three quarter notches. Now this makes me a little bit nervous because I believe these are tapered roller bearings, just like what we saw in the other differential. In other words, we have those, those type of bearings that, that are tapered, and they're also roller bearings. They don't like a whole lot of preload on them. They need a certain amount. And then one last thing to note about this is there's a reason why it's this loose. It's probably the bearings being worn out or something like that, and this may only be a band-aid until this thing finally goes completely. Really not sure. This is all really an experiment. But I figure, what do I have to lose, really? Front differential? Okay, fine. You know, well, this car is more of an experiment for us to have fun with anyway, so let's enjoy it. Okay, I'm gonna start my quest here by removing the uh, retainer, which is held on by this 14 millimeter bolt here on the right side or passenger side of the vehicle. And I'm just gonna take this out. So that we can make our adjustments. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Alright, here we are on the left side. And on the left side you can see the transmission lines are connected to another 14 on the opposite side here. And once again, it's going to remove it. I have to bend these out of the way a little bit. And there's my retainer. So now, we're going to need to rotate this outer assembly. I believe by tightening these retaining rings we put more of a, a squeeze or a preload onto those, those bearings that are the carrier assembly. Hopefully that'll, that'll snug it up. Now because I'm the type of guy that likes to be cautious when doing stuff like this, I'm just gonna mark with a sharpie this tooth and its location. It's easy to see and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This way I can always come back to where I was in the beginning. So if, if I'm questioning my adjustments, I can just say, you know what, I'm just gonna go back to the way it was and leave it alone. Okay, I found you a better angle. I think I'm gonna first start by just hitting the outside with a little bit of penetrating oil. Just let that seep into that. It's been a few years since this thing's turned at all, so maybe a little penetrating oil will make things move a little smoother. Now. Here is my mark um, for where we are now. So in case this goes wrong or in case we end up right back where we started from, well, here we are. So I'm just gonna take a chisel and a hammer and turn this in a clockwise direction until it bottoms out. Maybe I'm not gonna use a chisel. Maybe I'm gonna use this punch instead. And it's not moving. I'm trying to go in the opposite direction on one of these bigger ears. I just can't get it to move at all. All I'm really doing is kind of destroying this, uh, this retainer. Yep, and I don't want to do any more of that. We are sort of in an impasse on this side. Let's uh, let's try the other side. Okay, here we are on the opposite side. And do the same thing I did. And start out with a little penetrating oil. In hopes that that will get things started. 
And my mark for this one is actually up top here. It's this one here that I marked. See if we can get this side to budge. We can. And you know what? I think since we couldn't get the other side to move, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move this side one tooth. Yeah, this side actually is the loosest side anyway. So we just moved it a little bit. And this is all I've done before. This retainer was flipped around like this, and that's how far we've moved. But we can just turn it that amount and put this back in like this and switch it around. And it still does the job of retaining and it holds it. And that looks like it'll go right into place. So this tooth was over here and we moved it up that far. So we've we've just put more, you know, one tooth more of a preload on it. You can actually still hear some movement there. Because honestly, I think what we need to do is bring it in from the other side. So I'm gonna see what I could do to break that nut loose on the other side. All right, let's see if we can't get this guy loose. And no, I won't use heat. You just, this is not stuff that I would heat. You got a rubber seal in here, plus it's aluminum, plus there's fluid on the inside here. It just, heating it just doesn't seem like an option to me. What would really be great is if I had a brass one of these. Because brass is a softer metal and it, uh, will be more tender to these parts. I do have a brass hammer. I just, I just want to get it to start moving in one direction or the other. I feel that once I've done that, then I really, really will have done something. I may have to call it a day. I'm hitting around the outside of this to try to knock it loose. I don't think I'm gonna get any more out of it. I think all I'm gonna do is break something. Okay, this is my option of last resort. My air hammer. Now, this is either gonna work or it's gonna fail miserably, but an air hammer has a, a different effect than just hitting something with a hammer. It just, it's, those vibrations tend to knock things loose better than anything. So this will either work great or I'll fail miserably. But I'm really gonna try to, yeah, not fail miserably. So an air hammer is a really good way to chip these teeth off of here. <laughs> it certainly is not a good way to get things going. So I just, I'm not gonna get anything more out of this. I guess I'm just gonna have to be happy with the one tooth that I got on the other side. So I'm gonna put this back together and uh, let's take it for a test drive. And for those of you that uh, are concerned about, you know, the axles going back in and how all that works, well, you can watch the axle video if you wanna see that. I'm gonna check back in with you when I go on a test drive. Now the genesis of all this is I had a hesitation on acceleration that I've been dealing with for some time now. Um, whether or not this is going to help or not, I have no idea. Uh, it's just, I saw it, it was loose, wanted to see if it would help at all, so this is what I'm doing. Okay, now what I would notice in, like, say, a parking lot is when I would take a tight turn, I'd hear a little bit of something. thought it was an inner CV joint, but... Well, now I'm hearing some scraping because of my axles. <laughs> I probably uh, moved the splash shield or something. So it's a little difficult to tell if I have any noise still. Honestly, I notice barely any kind of change whatsoever. But, hey, it was fun to make the video. Let's go back and wrap this up. Okay, well, did it have a good effect? Did it have a bad effect? All we really did is move it one tooth on the right side. 
weren't able to move the left side. Uh, that just, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Uh, and I wasn't about to break every ear off of that thing trying to get that thing to spin. I, I wish I could have given you a complete uh, video here, but honestly, I would have had to have the differential out of the vehicle and set it up that way. Because everything I read in the service procedure and everything all said to set it up with special tools from Subaru outside the vehicle. So this was always a shot in the dark, but I did a little research on this before I actually committed to this video and saw that, that this is, I wouldn't necessarily say a common issue, but it's an issue that's out there. And there were people asking this very question, how can I tighten those things up with everything still in the vehicle? Well, I, I, I took a stab at it. If, if you run into this, I, I caution you because if you get the preload on the bearings wrong, things could go wrong, things could go bad. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, this stuff with the differential is, is kind of touchy stuff. It needs to be set up just right. If it's not just right, things can break as I talked about earlier. But I hope this video held some information for you, at least giving you an idea of, of what you might be able to do should you have that, that loose inner joint, inner axle thing that I had initially with the Subaru, which is the reason that I replaced the drive axles, thinking that that might clean it up. Uh, and thinking that that might also have something to do with my hesitation. I don't think either problem is solved at this point, but once again, I think we had fun making this video. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, where if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you post them to the search function, type in a couple of keywords there. It's quite possible you get an answer from that. If you don't, feel free to sign up for a forum. It's free. All you need is an email address. Uh, other than that, you can find me at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I will close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty, and I will see you next time. Catch you later.